And if you think I'm gonna get into what that whole circle of confusion means on today's Fast Friday video, you're nuts. everyone and welcome to pal to tech Today's Fast Friday video is a requested topic by one of our viewers, Dan Allen, who's been seeing a number of questions online about Fujifilm's depth of field focus scale. The depth of field focus scale is the little scale at the bottom of the camera. You see that right here? The way you enable it is you go into your wrench under screen setup, DISP custom setting, and make sure that distance indicator is on. You have choices to put it on for both manual focus and auto focus as well. I keep mine on for just manual focus. Once you have it enabled, you can begin using it. Now, depending upon where you live, you might want to change it from either feet to meters or meters to feet. And the setting for that is also located in the wrench in screen setup under focus scale units. You can go ahead and pick the one that you want to use. And that will then be displayed at the bottom of the screen. You see that? Now, just as a recap, the blue at the bottom of the depth of field scale, you see that right there? That blue area is the full range of your depth of field or what will be in focus between those two distances. So in this example here, if my subject is between about four to six feet from the camera, they should be in focus. That's the range that's in focus. Now you see the tiny little white dot right there? That indicates the exact distance your camera has set focus. And obviously that'll change if you rotate the focus ring. See that? Look at that. Now, if you have your distance indicator also set for auto focus, just like that, and you have your camera set to AFS, then you're only gonna see the blue depth of field bar and the little white indicator when you press halfway down on the shutter button. See, right now I don't see it, but if I press halfway down on the shutter button, boom. There it is right there. So that's the white mark and the blue area is the other parts of your image that are also in focus. And that can be increased or decreased based on your focus setting. So when I turn the focus ring, it shows me the area, obviously the range of my focus right here. And when I rotate the aperture ring, you can see the blue line getting smaller as I open up my aperture wider. Or as I stop down my lens and make the aperture smaller, the blue line, the amount of depth of field increases. Now, there's one more setting on here that confuses a number of people, and that is called pixel versus film format basis. That setting is located in AFMF under depth of field scale. You see that right here? And you can choose either pixel or film format. So what is it exactly? Well, that depends on what you're gonna be doing. If you're mostly going to be printing your images, you might wanna consider choosing film for the basis. If you're mostly publishing online or viewing them on a screen or a phone, then you're gonna wanna use pixel basis. Frankly though, I always keep mine set to pixel, even when I do intend on printing photos. And the reason I do that is based on what the camera does when you set either of those two settings. If you set it to film format basis, your camera's depth of field scale will show you that you have a wider depth of field than you would see displayed on the scale if you had had it set to pixel basis. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, I'm gonna have it set to pixel basis, all right? Now watch this. Look at the blue line, you see that? That's my depth of field. About six feet to nine and a half feet, you see that? right there now let's go back and change it to film format look at that look at how much more depth of field I got you see that well no <laughs> Not exactly, and that's part of the confusion. You don't get more depth of field, okay? Sorry, there's no shortcuts. You're not increasing your depth of field and getting more from your lens by sticking it in, you know, film format. It's, it's not gonna, that's not how it works, okay? The whole film versus pixel basis is just a tool that the camera provides to give you the idea of what the perceived depth of field would be based on your intended output of the photo. Okay, what's happening here is basically a combination of the perception of the human eye and a phenomenon called the circle of confusion. And if you think I'm gonna get into what that whole circle of confusion means on today's Fast Friday video, you're nuts. The circle of confusion is really technical. And I think, well, 
really confusing, all right? Seriously, be careful and do not operate heavy machinery while reading those articles that I will be linking to. Now, there's a great YouTube video from Adorama Camera that explains the circle of confusion, I think, better than anyone else has been able to do it. And rather than try and recreate and repeat the entire explanation here, I am going to link you right to the great animation they have in that video. But just to give you something right now to kind of get you through the rest of this video, the human eye perceives a greater depth of field when viewing a photo that's printed than it does viewing a photo on a screen, all right? That's as simple as I can make it. Go watch the other resources once we're done. Okay, so getting back to this in the bottom line on the depth of field focus scale, your camera is just showing you the available depth of field. You will not get any more depth of field if you change your basis to print. The only reliable way to increase your depth of field is to either, one, stop down your lens to a smaller aperture, two, move further away from your subject, or three, use a lens with a shorter focal length. Before I go, I want to say something. The week before last, I published a video on why you need to create. And if you haven't seen that video yet, be sure to check it out. The response that Tom received over on his channel from all of you was astounding. And one day when I look back on this channel and I think of all the highlights, certain times are gonna stand out for me. The time that I hit 10,000 subscribers, the time that I shot my first video with my children helping me out, the time that I shot an entire video while still feeling the effects of propofol, right? And what I can honestly tell you is that what you all did last week for Tom and how you made him feel was one of the highest and most awesome moments I've ever had on this channel. Thank you so much. I also want to thank Dan for his terrific recommendation for today's video topic. As always, if there's a topic that you'd like to see covered on Fast Friday, let me know. What I will be doing is taking my list of recommended topics to my backstage members, and they will all help decide which ones they think should be turned into videos on those requested topics. Speaking of which... Well, today I'm proud to announce that we have a brand new Gear Iguana Hall of Fame member, Eric Duncan. Eric, thank you so much, pal. I really appreciate the support, and it really goes a long way toward helping this channel out. Now, without any further ado, let's get your name added to the studio wall. Well, Eric, your name will always be on the studio wall, just out of frame <laughs> in every video I produce moving forward. Thank you so much. And thank you to the rest of you that have been helping out the channel. And for those of you that haven't seen Backstage yet, I will have a link down below where you can check it out. In the meantime, back to me in the studio. Well, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. And if you did, be sure to give it the like and subscribe. I am going to be signing off now. Have a wonderful weekend, and I will see all of you in a new video next week. Take care.